let's talk about Will Levis, something positive. 19 to 29, 238 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, for reference, Ryan Tannehill, over the course of the entirety of the season, has only two passing touchdowns. And these weren't little dump offs, and the running back, Derrick Henry, did the rest, or Ty J. Spears did the rest. This, my man, was dealing. The first one was a bomb to DeAndre Hopkins, who hadn't scored a touchdown all year, scored, I think DeAndre had three at least. I think, uh, Akine, Westbrook Akina had the other one. Uh, one was a slant to DeAndre. Thrown behind him, a great catch, whatever. It counts. I'm, I'll give him a pass on that. He had a couple other throws Will Levis did that were dropped or caught on the sidelines that could have been a great downfield throw. Um, the final throw. Across, his, across the field. Across the field, and it was thrown with a little anticipation. Westbrook Akine was neck and neck with the safety when the ball left his hands, and then he was wide open by the time the ball arrived in the, uh, the far corner of the end zone. I don't know what the downside is from his performance uh, against uh, a pocket defense that isn't elite, but it's an NFL defense, and it was his first start, and he looked great. He did. I will, I will give him credit for – and a couple of points that I want to make on him, that his strength of his game is his arm strength. We've Ooh. always talked about that. and. Tennessee, up until Levis came in, has been a dink and dunk offense. Run the ball, some play action, but basically dink and dunk. All of a sudden, I give credit to the offensive coordinator there, to Vrabel there. They start throwing the ball down the field because that's what Will Levis's strength is. When you watched Atlanta's defense, they weren't a lot of, almost looked like single coverage. I know there were some zones, but there wasn't a lot of help on the back end. And, and I give D hop credit for the double move that he made on the one touchdown pass down the seam that he caught. So, and Will Levis made those throws. Um, the question I have is when a defense now knows what he can do. And I thought if there was any area that he struggled, it's if you have to sit him in the pocket and make him go through his progressions, which he didn't have to do this game. No. It was set, throw, go down the field, let D hop be like the D hop we saw five years ago and make all the plays that he did. Now the defensive coordinators have this tape and they force him to play quarterback from the pocket to read and go through his progressions. Now, if he can do that and still have the same success that he had this week, then you can crown him king. So I will. Uh, hold my reservations. I recognize what a great game he had, what an incredible deep ball accuracy that he had shown in this game. But I want to see him when a defense forces him to play quarterback from the pocket. Yeah, I'm just looking at my notes here. That last touchdown, that was Jesse Bates in coverage. It wasn't just uh, – Richie Grant was the one that got smoked on the on the stutter go by, by a D-hop on the next-to-last touchdown. And, you know, good for him because we saw him throughout the process. He looked tight in terms of just, like, uptight. Like, you know, Bryce was laid back. CJ was laid back. A even Anthony Richardson was laid back when we saw them at the pro day or talked to them. And, and it felt like Levis was trying to prove everyone wrong in 15 minutes. And he went out there. He seemed relieved. Our Amanda Guerra was there as a sideline reporter. She talked to him after the game. And um, good for him, man. Good for him. Rick, you gave him an A for his performance. Yep. I'm reading the instructions here. A to F, plus or minus included. Hmm, no plus or minus from Rick, so he must just want to give an A. I will give him an A plus, just so I can outdo you. Price is right, reverse rules. Okay. Well, you can use the plus and minuses since it wasn't laid out in the initial. Right here. I'm reading it. Yeah, I know, but that's different. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference now. It doesn't make a difference now, Debo. Oh, by the way, quickly, here's the, the other thing I want to mention. So that game was at home. The home, uh, the home opener for, for Will Levis against a, a Falcons team that's struggling um, on both sides of the ball for being frank. But the next three games at Pittsburgh on Thursday night's a short week. Is that good or bad for a rookie quarterback in terms of him not having to think about it and also the, the preparation for the defense on the other side not having time, or does it not matter? No, nah, it could be good, uh, you know, just because you can get right back into it. Yeah. Uh, although the prep is a little shorter for the rookie quarterback, a veteran may be able to handle, be interested to see if they simplify the game plan for him on a short week or not. And it'll be interesting to see now that Pittsburgh knows that this dude can throw the ball 5,000 yards down the field and with accuracy, how they take that away.
I think Mink is probably going to be out. I haven't heard, but he left that game with a hamstring, so that's a problem. Debo, have you talked to Pat P and BMAC yet about their plans for Tennessee, or is that coming up on a show? Yeah, we talked last night. Um, BMAC asked Pat, you know, with just one game of tape, do they ever go back and, and look at some college tape at Kentucky? He said they're way too far into the season to ever consider looking at, at college tape of Levis. And, and the other thing, too, is he only played in one preseason game because he was hurt, played against yeah. the Bears, and that was against a lot of cover two and cover three, just zone coverage, and he was up and down in that game. I think so, it's against a lot of Ryan Wilsons that are no longer in the league. Yes. <laughs> So, by the way, yeah, if you want to hear that, that's all things covered with uh, our Brian McFadden and uh, his cousin, Patrick Peterson, signed by Rick Spielman, who now plays for the Steelers. Uh, so at Pittsburgh on Thursday, then it's at Tampa Bay, then it's at Jacksonville. So three straight away games for rookie quarterback. I would imagine, and I haven't heard from Mike Vrabel or otherwise, you're just rolling with him whether Ryan oh, Tannehill's yeah. healthy or not? Yeah, you can't go back now. Okay. Okay. All right. A, A plus. A from Rick, A plus from me. Uh, this just in, Pete Prisco gave him uh, A with three pluses afterwards. No, Pete Prisco gave him a gold jacket. A gold jacket? Yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's in the Pete Prisco Hall of Fame. All right, next up. And if Will Levis hadn't started this week, Bryce Young, we'd be talking about how this is his best game of the year. Yep. Oh, he played He played really well. Had one touchdown to Tommy Trimble on a nice little corner uh, into a crowded area uh, of the end zone there, the back corner. But I thought, he continues to throw with the, the type of anticipation, like, oh, my gosh, this, this guy is not messing around. He threw one in the middle of the field. Uh, there was the uh, linebacker running underneath. There was a safety over the top. Adam, It hit Adam Thielen in the hand. Yeah. And, and he turned around. He hit a millisecond. He just didn't yeah. turn around quickly enough. The ball was there, and it's not a ball that a lot of quarterbacks at any level would make. No, and that's what we're talking about, guys understanding the speed of the game. That throw that he made to Thielen that I thought Thielen had a chance to catch, and he dropped it. That same throw, he was late in the opener versus Atlanta, and Jesse Bates picked him off twice. That there was an example of a young quarterback learning from his mistakes, and now you see how he is throwing with anticipation. He's getting the ball out. His trust in Adam Thielen has just grown through the weeks, and so I thought this was definitely his best game. He continues to get better week in and week out. And yes. for him, with the game on the line to take them down at the end, make some of the throws he made, he's making off-schedule plays. He doesn't have to set his feet to throw. Uh, moves around in the pocket well, which he better, or else he may you know, he's going to end up in a body bag if they keep hitting the way he has. And it was, I thought they took more shots down the field this week. And yeah. they do be due to the new play caller and Thomas Brown taking over play calling to at least coming out of the uh, bye week. By the way, um, why don't you talk to me about the the play? Uh, so Chuba Hubbard gets trucked. Jalen Petre runs through Chuba Hubbard, the safety. Uh, gets his hands basically around the waist of Bryce Young. Bryce spins out to his left and then finds Thielen downfield for a 31-yard gain. I mean, that, yeah. to me, is sort of what he's done all season and having to run for his life, but it seemed to all come together on Sunday. Yeah, and he kept his eyes downfield and his accuracy down the field uh, – may have been in question early, but that has improved. And he is just getting more and more confident with the more reps he gets. Um, so you gave him an A. I'm going to give him an A as well. Let me ask you this. If you're the general manager or the coach, do you have a conversation with Bryce through the first five or six weeks when all the losing? Because you used to get – you'd have your people give you, like, the press clippings, right? So you knew what people were saying about the players or not? Yeah. So he was catching a lot of heat until this this win here. They were 0-6. Is that something you would pull him aside and say, don't worry about it, you let him figure it out himself, or does it just depend you know, on the player? You don't have to do that with Bryce Young. Okay. Bryce Young is so mentally tough and so, I don't want to say callous, but doesn't listen to the outside noise. He Smart. is just so honed in and focused, one of the most mature kids I've ever been around, and is able to handle that that type of criticism or whatever is coming. Okay. He just goes out in place. Yeah, he seemed undefected by it, but it's something. They say he can block out the noise. Well, he he it's it worked out in his favor on Sunday, and that was a huge win. I didn't think they were going to win, just in part because of the offensive line. The the defense played extremely well, which they had struggled to do for much of the season, and also because of the play we're going to talk about next. C.J. Stroud has been playing at such a high level 
CJ looked human. He didn't look bad. He just looked human. He looked like a rookie quarterback. Yeah, made some really good throws. Yeah. Throws. Um, he just did not look as good as he had earlier in the season. Maybe coming out of the bye, I don't know, uh, to get back in rhythm because he was playing at a pretty high level. Um, and probably will get back on track. But I didn't think this was one of his best games. But it wasn't a, a bad game either. It was No. It was a solid game. But he didn't get much help either. And that's the thing. Um, two of his first three passes were knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Um, he overthrew Nico early on um, on a deep route. But, he again, he throws with the, the type of anticipation that you watch and you go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like he's throwing to, to space where – uh, not only is there no one there, but the player that ends up catching the ball is double covered as he's getting out of his break and then somehow throws him open. And that's encouraging if you're Bobby Sloak, the office coordinator, if you're Domenico Ryan's the new head coach, and if you're his teammates because they seem to rally around him. And that was the story about Bryce, I mean, about CJ coming out anyway. Like, And you talked about this at the at the, at the uh, pro day. Like he's He didn't have to be out there till the end of the pro day because that's when he threw. But he was out there cheering on his offensive line teammates, Paris Johnson, and Luke Whippler, um, you know, dapping them up and all the other things. And and you said, you know, that's something you make a note of and you see if it's genuine or not. And it certainly feels like it's genuine. But more than that, he's had a fantastic start to his rookie season. And this game wasn't great, but it by no means made you say, oh, okay, this guy's not who he thought he was. No, no, it was solid. It was solid. If a quarterback has a solid game, hopefully the other pieces of the uh, puzzle can pick it up. And they were. They had a chance to win. And then Bryce just did an incredible job on that final drive. Yep. Um, you give him a B. I'm going to give him a B plus just to outdo you. I'll give him a B. I don't give him a B plus. He, he played He played solid. I think that's the right way to think about it. 